Did you know that every time musicians pick up their instruments, there are fireworks going off all over their brain? On the outside, they may look calm and focused, reading the music and making the precise and practice movements required. But inside their brains, there's a party going on. How do we know this? Well, in the last few decades, neuroscientists have made enormous breakthroughs in understanding how our brains work by monitoring them in real time with instruments like fMRI and PET scanners. When people are hooked up to these machines, tasks such as reading or doing math problems each have corresponding areas of the brain where activity can be observed. But when researchers got the participants to listen to music, they saw fireworks. Multiple areas of their brains were lighting up at once as they processed the sound, took it apart to understand elements like melody and rhythm, and then put it all back together into unified musical experience. And our brains do all this work in the split second between when we first hear the music and when our foot starts to tap along. But when scientists turn from observing the brains of music listeners to those of musicians, the little backyard fireworks became a jubilee. It turns out that while listening to music engages the brain in some pretty interesting activities, playing music is the brain's equivalent of a full body workout. The neuroscientists saw multiple areas of the brain light up, simultaneously processing different information in intricate, interrelated, and astonishingly fast sequences. But what is it about making music that sets the brain alight? The research is still fairly new, but neuroscientists have a pretty good idea. Playing a musical instrument engages practically every area of the brain at once, especially the visual, auditory, and motor cortices. And as with any other workout, disciplined, structured practice in playing music strengthens those brain functions, allowing us to apply that strength to other activities. The most obvious difference between listening to music and playing it is that the latter requires fine motor skills, which are controlled in both hemispheres of the brain. It also combines the linguistic and mathematical precision in which the left hemisphere is more involved with the novel and creative content that the right excels in. For these reasons, playing music has been found to increase the volume and activity in the brain's corpus callosum, the bridge between the two hemispheres, allowing messages to get across the brain faster and through more diverse routes. This may allow musicians to solve problems more effectively and creatively in both academic and social settings. Because making music also involves crafting and understanding its emotional content and message, musicians often have higher levels of executive function, a category of interlinked tasks that includes planning, strategizing, and attention to detail, and requires simultaneous analysis of both cognitive and emotional aspects. This ability also has an impact on how our memory systems work. And indeed, musicians exhibit enhanced memory functions, creating, storing, and retrieving memories more quickly and efficiently. Studies have found that musicians appear to use their highly connected brains to give each memory multiple tags, such as a conceptual tag, an emotional tag, an audio tag, and a contextual tag, like a good internet search engine. So how do we know that all these benefits are unique to music, as opposed to, say, sports or painting? Or could it be that people who go into music were already smarter to begin with? Neuroscientists have explored these issues, but so far, they have found that the artistic and aesthetic aspects of learning to play a musical instrument are different from any other activity studied, including other arts. And several randomized studies of participants who showed the same levels of cognitive function and neural processing at the start found that those who were exposed to a period of music learning showed enhancement in multiple brain areas compared to the others. This recent research about the mental benefits of playing music has advanced our understanding of mental function, revealing the inner rhythms and complex interplay that make up the amazing orchestra of our brain.
Throughout the four and a half day conference, attendees will have the opportunity to participate in a host of clinics, rehearsal lab sessions, and new music reading sessions. There's been several amazing sessions already that I've been to, and I think one of the most inspiring was listening to Frank T. Kelly talk about his compositional techniques and his inspiration and how he's composing now for young bands. Clinics, which are sometimes called seminars or lectures at other music conferences, are conducted by esteemed industry leaders and cover a wide variety of topics, including technique, technology, and the advancement of music education. Rehearsal lab sessions allow participants to observe a conductor as he or she works with several different ensemble types. These sessions are extremely popular among educators who want to learn new teaching methods that they can bring back home to their students. New music reading sessions give participants the opportunity to hear brand new musical pieces performed live by professional musicians. These sessions are a great resource for band directors who want to try before they buy. Register for the Midwest Clinic's annual conference today and enjoy access to each and every one of these dynamic sessions. The belief of our organization really is that concert band is the kind of core of music education. Concert band in general, it's the center of what we do as band directors and as educators. It's the best place probably to teach students about instrumental music in an ensemble setting and really focus on details. I do think that the concert band is where things should be centered when it comes to most band programs. We believe strongly that the concert band is the place where kids really learn the fundamentals about performing and those kinds of things, at least the music part of it. And marching band and jazz band and chamber ensembles are all an outgrowth of the concert band program. But we really believe that the core of the program is the concert band itself. <laughs> the nuance and the subtleties that you can create in concert band that you just can't create anywhere else makes it very, very special. I think that so many times we just assume that concert band is not going to be as exciting as marching band or as jazz band or some of the other things that they do. It can be every bit as exciting. Um, but, you know, the person on the podium has to demand and expect that from the students. And if that happens, the audience definitely feels it. If you're talking about creating excitement, I, I look at that as creating emotion. And, you know, all music, if you're not, no matter what the idiom is or the medium is, if you're not creating emotion, then I'm, I'm, my question would be, why create the music? because that's what music is here for. It's, it's to stir our souls, it's to create emotion, not just in the performers, but in the audience as well. 